You know this unforgettable feeling of unboxing your new MacBook? You know, the smell. You are so excited that you skip all these boring settings and you start exploring the system because it's so fun. But then you start using it and it feels fine, but you know that you've missed something. And I still meet people that don't use their MacBook to its full potential, so I ended up making this video where I'm gonna show you huge mistakes I've made while setting up and using my first Mac. We're gonna go through this process step by step and by the end of this video, you will be 100% sure that you've done everything right. The the first huge mistake you can make is not checking the body of your MacBook right after you've removed the protective cover. If it's a new MacBook, 99.9% .9 you will have a brand new MacBook right from the factory. But you should keep in mind that it's possible and you might end up using the device from a black market. This is way more important if you're getting a used one, so look at the screws to make sure there's no scratches because if there's even a small scratch, that's a really bad sign and you should consider replacing it immediately. Also, no scratches on the case, of course, no marks, make sure it's brand new. It takes just one minute to check out and it's completely worth it. After you launch your MacBook, you will have to go through some pretty basic settings, just go through it, but I want to stop at the migration assistant step. And if it's your first time, it may seem scary because you are not sure, will it transfer all my files or just a part of it, maybe something will get lost on the way, and is it the same process? if I transfer it from a Windows PC. Don't worry, it's a really cool feature, you won't lose your files, and it's actually a mistake not doing so, because otherwise you will lose a ton of time. So just click continue and the Mac will do its thing. But keep in mind that if it's a Windows PC, it's only gonna transfer your data, so photos, documents, videos, and so on. Right after you've created your Apple ID, you'll be asked to set up Find My Mac, which is useful if your Mac is lost or stolen, and please, Please do it now, because 90% you won't do it later. Only if something critical happens. Trust me, I've been there. Not setting up the Find My Mac feature is a huge mistake in my opinion. Then you will be asked to create a computer account with a name and password. And it's pretty obvious to create a password that you won't forget. But in case you're scared by the fact that your Mac will turn into a piece of metal if you forgot your password, here's what's really gonna happen. Right after the third attempt, you will see this pop-up window, and in this window, click on this text. Your Mac will restart, and all you will have to do is to enter your Apple ID and its password in this window. If you have also forgotten your Apple ID, then move your Mac into a trash can, you can't use it anymore. <laughs> okay, just kidding. Click on this link here and Apple will do its best to help you out. If it's really your Mac, you will be fine. So don't be afraid, you will have a chance to reset your password. However, if you don't want to go through this reset process, you can always create a custom message on your lock screen and write down an extra hint that will help you to remember your password, memento style. To create this message, go to System Preferences, Security and Privacy, General, and then set lock screen message. And it's pretty useful for scary situations like if you lost your MacBook, you can leave a message with your phone number, increasing your chances of getting your laptop back. Okay, so now you can start using your MacBook, but before you do, check for any operating system updates, especially if it's running on Apple Silicon. Every single update might be very important, many issues are still getting fixed, so just just update your Mac. Next up is a really huge mistake you can avoid. So there's the right and wrong ways to charge your MacBook. For the first week or so, you will charge your MacBook with the original charger. This is just your only option. But then you will have a desire to buy a hub or maybe a monitor that will power up your MacBook. And you can make a mistake at this point because if it's not compatible, it might decrease your battery's capacity much faster. So here are some tips to avoid this. Number one is pretty obvious use the original charger. If you lost one, then get a new one from the Apple store. Do not try to save money looking for a third-party charger. You will find lots of well-made copies, which are still incompatible. You can charge your MacBook with docks and monitors, but make sure they're from trustworthy brands. For example, Logitech, Anchor, and Dell are some good brands. I'm not sure about the small USB-C dongle charging hubs. However, I think if it's from a good brand and you don't use it for long periods, of time, then you'll be fine. One of my friends has been using a hub for a few months and the capacity went down to 91%. It's pretty
pretty significant. But if you want to be 100% sure, just choose accessories from the official Apple Store. Now, before we move to some useful settings and tricks, I want to share with you shortcuts that I use all the time. The first one is not really a shortcut, but a feature that will help you access almost anything on your Mac. It's called the Spotlight Search. And you can access it in three different ways. Just click on this magnifying glass on your keyboard and this pop-up window will appear. You can also press Command plus Spacebar or you can click on this icon in the status bar. But I think the third way is inconvenient and it's better to remove this icon by holding Command and dragging it down here. Talking about the status bar, you can control your brightness or volume without going to the control center. So open the control center, hold this sound bubble and move it to the status bar. Now you can control it just by clicking here. And you can do the same thing with other elements in the control center. Another useful one is Command plus Q and Command plus W. First one will close the app completely and the second one will close the window, but the app will still be running in the background. This is much quicker than clicking red and yellow icons in the corner. Also, Command plus Tab will allow you to easily switch between different programs and Shift plus Option plus Screen Brightness Controls will allow you to increase and decrease the brightness in small increments. We all know Control alt delete in Windows OS and we have almost the same thing in Mac OS. Just press Option Command Escape and in this window you can easily force quit the apps. Okay, the next portion of the video will get pretty boring but I recommend you to do it because it will make your life so easier and it's just set it and forget it so stay with me. Click on the Apple logo, go to System Preferences and Trackpad. By default, the tracking speed is pretty slow, so set it up to like 7 or 8. And one setting that I think should be turned on by default is tap to click. This will allow you to tap your trackpad without pressing it all the way down. Everyone I know uses this feature, so turn it on, you will use it too. If you are an Apple Watch user, then you have the option to unlock your Mac with your watch. In the system preferences, go to security and privacy and put a check mark right here. This unlocks your MacBook much faster than moving your finger to the Touch ID button, so I totally recommend using this feature. Another must-have is Hot Corners. Hot Corners allows you to launch different actions just by placing your cursor in one of the four corners. For example, in my case, for the bottom left corner I use lock screen, for the bottom right desktop so I can quickly move files from my desktop to an app and vice versa, for the top left launch pad and for the top right mission control. Mission control is basically the place where you can create virtual desktops. And another way to access it is by swiping up with three fingers, you can click on this plus icon and this will create a new desktop. You can swipe between desktops by swiping with three fingers left or right. This is very convenient, I use it all the time. Now go ahead and open display in the system preferences and sometimes I like to set the resolution to scaled and then more space. And this will allow you to see more things, which is crucial if you got the 13 inch model for example and you want to use the app with a complicated user interface. I think it's useful not all the time because the text is getting really small, but sometimes it's very convenient. Another thing to do is to click clear your dock. Go ahead and delete the apps that you don't use every day, because you can easily find them using the Spotlight Search feature. Right-click the app and select Remove from Dock. In the System Preferences, go to Dock and Menu Bar and adjust the size of it. Another way to adjust the size is by clicking on this vertical line. I also like to use magnification, I think it looks cool, and I check automatically hide and show the dock. This will clean up the screen's real estate, which I think is crucial for multi Asking. I didn't find the recent apps feature useful, so I recommend unchecking it here. As for the finder, this smiling face over here, when you click on it, a specific folder will appear, and you can change this folder to the one that is convenient for you. Go to Finder Preferences, and down here you can find New Finder Windows Show and select the one you need. In the same window, go to Sidebar, and you can edit what shows up in the sidebar. I remove the music, pictures, all the iCloud stuff, and I add my home folder to the favorite section. All right, we're done with the boring system setup. Now let's move to the macOS tips and 
apps for productivity. One tip that was a big surprise for me is the Keynote or Pages tip. Let's say you've created your screenplay. You don't like it and you want to find a version you've created a few days ago. And you actually can. Go to File, Revert To and Browse All Versions and you will see an interface that looks like a time machine and here you can see all the different variations of the document that you made previously. You can go to the one you need, hit Done and Magic. I think most of you know already that there's a split screen feature in the macOS. You just drag one of the windows from your desktop to another app in the Mission Control and boom, now you have two apps in one window. And by moving the middle line, you can make one window bigger or smaller. Very useful feature, but there is also an app called Rectangle. In Rectangle, you can define keyboard shortcuts to snap a window to any of these sizes. I like to use the two-way and three-way split configuration, maybe because I used a Windows laptop previously and it's something similar. In some scenarios, Rectangle might be more convenient than the built-in split screen feature and the app is open source, so go ahead and try try this one out. It surprises me how many people still don't know about this feature. I just look at their desktop and it's so messy. To clean this up, just right click and select use stacks. This intelligently creates groups of files and once you click on it, it expands and now you can see all of your files. I also have a few apps that I use all the time. I'm gonna quickly go through them, but if you want an in-depth review on these apps, just let me know in the comments. Also, this video is not sponsored. These are the apps that I really use every day. The first app is called Yoink. It's not free, it's $7.99 and it basically allows you to bring the drag and drop feature to the next level. It's working like a temporary shelf to hold files. So once you start moving one of your files, this pop-up window appears. Now drag the file inside, then open a new folder and drag the file to the new folder. Makes your life so much easier. You can use Clean My Mac X to find and remove all the junk and scan activities that have been draining your computer's resources. Simple as that, a must-have tool. The next app is called Top Notch and it basically hides the notch, making the menu bar completely black. So if it's annoying, just hide it. iStats menu allows you to monitor the CPU and GPU usage, so if your computer is slowing down, this will help you determine the cost. Even if you're not into stats and technical information about your computer, one day it will help you a lot. Once I bought my first MacBook, it was a huge mistake that I didn't use most of the features I've mentioned, so don't be like me, do it, it will make your experience so much better. If you have any questions left, drop them down in the comments. Also, smash the like button if you like the video. Check out one of the videos you see on the screen and see you in the next one.